Give it up for Trevor, guys. Give it up for Trevor one more time. What is your dad doing in HD, bro? <laughs> we might not want to see that, really. <laughs> Anyone go camping in the wintertime? Woo! Yeah, I know white people do. Anyone black go camping in the wintertime? <laughs> you ever been the only black guy camping with 15 white guys in the wintertime? White guys don't think it's a party unless someone dies or gets seriously injured. <laughs> Swimming across a river at 12 a.m. at night for losing a game of cornhole is not fun. No, I really did. I just got back from my best friend's bachelor party and he went to have the middle of nowhere. Just 15 white dudes, two Asians, myself, and Mother Nature. A recipe for disaster. No, naturally I was like, I'm sticking with the Asians. Now, how these dudes managed to dry clean my clothing to pristineness in the middle of nowhere, I will never know. But I left the woods with my swimming trunks creased and the best manicure and pedicure I've ever had in my life. I hang out with a lot of white people, I do it for a number of reasons. Usually if I hang out with white people, that means I'm the coolest person in the room. My, my white friends get that twisted though. They say, TJ, you're the whitest black guy I know. I'm like, dude, I'm the only black guy you know. I don't take you around my black friends because I'm afraid that you'll say some ignorant shit, and you will. I took my white friend around my black friends. We were having a discussion about slavery. He said, we said, uh, yeah, dude, slavery is bad and everything, but. <laughs> exactly, that's the joke. And if it took some of you guys a long time to get that, and I'm not going to say anything, but you're part of the problem. You're part of the fucking problem. No, I actually started to believe for a little bit. I was like, maybe I'm a white black guy. Maybe I am. I believed until I went to court. When the court judge told me I looked just like every other black guy he knows, guilty. Yeah. That was funnier. You guys, don't, feel, don't be afraid to laugh. This shit's funny. Anyone come from a religious family? Woo. Nobody comes from a religious family. Thank you, Mary. I come from a religious uh, Jesus. Christ. I come from a religious family. Anytime anything's going wrong, my grandmother says, just pray. If it don't work out, just pray hard. How do you pray harder? I know how to work harder, I know how to train harder, I don't know how to pray harder. I messed around and prayed so hard I pulled a muscle. I went to my grandma's house holding my back, she said, how'd you hurt your back, son? I said, praying. Some people believe that Jesus was black, I'm not one of them. I think that if Jesus was black, black people would have turned on him by now. Black people not turned in on Jesus. Oh, listen, white people, I'm gonna tell you guys something no black person wants you to know. Black people talk more shit about Obama than every race combined. We just do it from the comfort of our homes. You assholes go out in public and do it. Then forget that you're talking to black people about it. Then we forget that you're talking to us about it. Conversation goes, hey man, Obama not doing shit for the economy. I'm like, yeah man, tell me about it. Slow down, white dude. Let's get back to Jesus being black real quick. If Jesus was black, can you imagine how ashy his feet would have been? And who's gonna say anything to him? That's Jesus. And you'd be like, damn, Jesus, look like you're wearing white socks with your sandals. Did you put some olive oil for Jesus' feet? Damn, Jesus, you need a pedicure. Are you guys ready for your next comedian? Oh, yeah. Are you ready for your next comedian? Oh, yeah. Your next comedian coming to the stage has more names and analogies for his dick than any man I've ever met in my life. Give it up for Mr. Paige Campbell. I don't know how many of you guys know this about me, but I'm a theater kid, my degree's in theater. And Brooke, she may very well be the first comedian ever to quote a Shakespeare line. And when you said, sound and fury, they signify nothing. You think I catch that shit? <laughs> what, what's it from? Troilus and Crespin. That's not what it's from. Uh, what is it from? What's that? Uh, is it from Macbeth? I don't know either, man. <laughs> you got glasses on. I just assume you're right when you say shit. <laughs> You can tell me anything. I'm like, yup. What did he say? A summer's eve. A summer's eve? Uh, you got you fucking with me now. You're not from that. You're not that smart. You still black too. You just got glasses. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I can say that. Don't none of y'all try to say that. None of you guys try to say that. Uh, so I also got to tell you guys something. I used to be a big pothead. I, you, I, yeah, I, well, I'm not talking about like the amount of weed I smoke because I still smoke the same amount of weed, but I used to be a fat pothead. I was larger than I was. And I used to live in Houston, and that's what happens when you smoke pot all day and live within walking distance of a jack-in-the-box and a whataburger. And you still drive to them. But I've been a vegan for a year now. I've been a vegan. Thank you. That's wonderful. I know, right? And 
and um, I feel a lot safer, not so much because of what I eat, but because of where I shop. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you don't gotta worry about shit shopping at Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. Fresh market, leave your doors unlocked, nothing. <laughs> leave an uh, iPad, laptop, anything. You shop at Food Line, you gotta put chains on the tires, lock the doors, hire a security guard, all that. But um, it was funny because my parents, are, not my parents, my family pretty much in general had stopped trying to shop for me. And this Christmas, my aunt was like, I can find you something. So she got me a sweater. She was like, I know you like them kind of tight, so I got you a medium. She was like, what grown man wears a medium? I was like, actually, I'm a small, but I can make this work. <laughs> that was funnier than you guys made it down. Uh, are you guys ready for your next comedian? That was weak. Are you guys ready for your next comedian? Jason Custer until you get home. So, make some noise if you got a job. That's wonderful, because employers are tricky, man. Employers don't even tell you that you're fired anymore. You just show up to work and you're not on the schedule anymore. Like, you couldn't call to tell me this? I had to drive over here for you and embarrass me in front of my friends? I had to put my game of Madden on pause for you to tell me that I'm fired? Because if I get fired, I try to take somebody down with me. I'm like, well, Jason called me a nigger. <laughs> boss is like, get in here, Jason. You're fired, too. Jason's waking up like, dude, this is the best job I've ever had. I'm like, hey, man, you got to look at the positives. <laughs> now we can play Madden all day. Now we can play Madden all day. Punchlines are usually funnier when you say them twice. Now we can play Madden all... Fuck you guys. <laughs> are you guys ready for your next comedian? Tom Hall. Who out there has tried shrooms before? I would never promote drug use, but if you have not tried shrooms, they're worth trying once in your life. I did them in undergrad, and I swear to you, it's fucking Pleasantville outside. The grass was greener, the trees were greener, the wind blew, and I could see every individual strand of grass move, and then I played touch football with Tony the Tiger for like three hours. I want to know what's going on over here. What are you guys talking about? Because you guys are having such a... Are you, first day? Second day? You fucking? I mean, what are you talking about? You trying to fuck? If you're trying to fuck, we leave you alone. You trying to fuck? Huh? You talking about me? What, what are you saying about me? Uh, you guys are awesome. All these guys are funny, but you're not listening to all of them. You gotta listen to all of them. You're writing some commentary? You want to get on stage? That's what it's for. It's open mic. What's your name, sweetheart? I'm Kristen. Kristen. No. Kristen. No. Oh, well, where are you from, Kristen? Nelson County. Ladies and gentlemen, I was a long-term substitute, Chris, uh, substitute Christian. I was a long-term substitute teacher when Kristen was in high school. Wasn't I? You're not from Nelson? You're from Nelson? Mr. Ferguson, the drama teacher when Mr. Robert was on maternity leave? Ty, Saunders, all of them? I know all of them. You're lying your ass off right now. <laughs> you are lying your ass off right now. Anyway, just, just, well, what do you do for a living, Kristen? I'm a student. You're a student. So how would you like it if while you were trying to take notes, a motherfucker was just all up in your ear talking shit the entire fucking time? You would hate it. You would fucking hate it. Don't tell me you wouldn't. It would fucking suck. Now, I'm going to go back to teacher mode, and the next time you guys start like disrespecting one of these comics, I'm just going to come up here and take the mic and say, I'll wait. Yeah. And then I'll turn the fucking light off. <laughs> Thank you guys for another incredible show at the Barn Yard. It's been awesome. I'm going to leave you guys with this. There is a... There's a false myth that men don't buy underwear. We know women buy underwear because women know when they're getting laid. They know that. Men, we take the same seven pair of drawers and wear them for seven years. If we get lucky enough to get laid, we say, well, hope these don't have any skin marks. Bit of an exaggeration. I did just buy a new pair of underwear. They were nice. They had a picture of an elephant on the front. No trunk, just two tusks and two elephant ears. So I put them on for my girlfriend. I was getting all sexy for her. She said, ooh, baby, where's the trunk? I said, girl, you know where the trunk is. She said, oh, it's a baby elephant. Oh. You 
guys obviously have no idea how big a baby elephant's trunk is. <laughs> hey, seriously, on a serious note, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Trevor. Are you guys ready?